Rachel. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Welcome. You're on deck. I know. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah? I'm feeling good. I'm excited. Good. That Honored is to be here. Thank you for having great. me. Great. You are welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Rachel, you are one of our very important client managers very here important. at the agency. And you've been with us for just about a year mm -hmm. and I thought what a an interesting place to start would be for us to talk about what it was like for you to join a company like a week or two before COVID and then boom you're working from home on a brand new job and don't know anybody and don't necessarily know what the job is what was that like <laughs> well um, it was a lot uh, it was a real lot, um, yeah. but it was it was it was good. It turned out to be good because it taught me um, what I can, what I'm capable of. And because honestly, there were a few times where I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know how to use this program. And not a few times, actually, multiple times per day. Mm -hmm. You know, because as you mentioned, like shortly thereafter when I started working here, we're working remote, and so now you know I have the the laptop and the monitor and all these programs, not all these programs, but you know what I mean. Yes. Even even one or two is still a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost like learning a different language, you know, when I'm learning new programs and stuff like that. So it, it was a lot, but I uh, I was proud of myself. I Even if I had to Google things, like how to use central desktop, you know? <laughs> right. Um, and then I took like very good notes. Um, and then whatever training that I got from from you know the team here, I, I made sure I wrote everything down, so I wouldn't have to you know ask twice. Um, it was a lot, but it was it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> it had to be. It had to be a lot because you, you know you're coming in to a new type of position yes. for you in a new industry. Yep. With new people mm -hmm. at a new company, mm -hmm. and almost instantaneous it was like literally like two weeks what was it two weeks a month maybe that you were here in the office uh -huh. and then it was march 15th and it's okay we got to pack up and everybody's working from home mm -hmm. and so i can only imagine that you know you start this new job you're excited <laughs> right? right and then the whole world goes you know crazy right and you're sitting at home by yourself going okay now what do i do yeah it was it was it was intense it was intense at times um it was, and it, and it and it took me a while to kind of get into my groove. Right. But once I did, it's all smooth sailing. <laughs> what was the thing for you? Okay, so you get into your groove. What what was the um, what was your foundational anchor through that? Like the one thing that you're like, okay, I know I may not know all this, but I know I'm good at this, and I'm gonna you know use this skill to the to the best of my ability, and oh, then all the rest will fill it in. That is an easy question. Um, one hundred percent relationships, um, relationships with clients, um, with coworkers. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important to have a good relationship with people because it's actually, it's a partnership really. And um, it's just important to always be in communication and to know what they're thinking and they're wanting and they're looking for and make sure that we're delivering, um, you know, what, what they're looking for right um what, what um yeah i'm glad to hear you say that because with us it's funny one of the things that my dad used to always say was it's all about the relationships it really like is. i mean he and he would just pound that into me and, and he would say that to me at a time in my life when i was definitely more focused on doing the work right i mean right. it was like learning skills learning the abilities to to succeed in this right. business and getting the job done and it and it and it wasn't until later in my career where I really started where what he said really started to resonate and and so I think you know the operational philosophy of our business or quite frankly any business is and should be you've got to do great work right the the, the great work is an expectation mm -hmm. but the thing that makes you different and the thing that keeps you connected to your clients is the relationship right right almost always if we win or lose an account it's it's almost always relationship based because there's so many companies that do similar work to us right right so where did you for you i knew that that was going to be the answer to your question because i know that you're strong in that i mean almost every client not almost every client that works with you gives a lot of positive feedback about your 
really strong ability to nurture and work that relationship. And oh. that gives them a lot of confidence and faith in you to do the job. Well, so where did that skill set come for you? I have, I swear to you, I'm not even just saying this, I have always really been like that um, ever since I was a kid. I like making friends with everyone. I like learning everyone's story. Um, I like asking questions. I like making people laugh. I like making people feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, going, I was gonna go back to uh, something I said before because I made it sound like it was relationships and partnerships is all work stuff, but it's, it's not. It's so much more than that. And it's like, caring and remembering someone's birthday or letting them vent to you about their husband or their kids that are pissing them off that day or something right. and just that they feel like they can talk to you like a friend and obviously it's a work relationship right? right but i feel like especially nowadays like there's a lot there's a lot going on there's a lot of stress factors um that a lot of us can relate to and i think people feel comfortable opening up to me and talking to me because I, I don't know, because I, I care, I, I genuinely care. And the work part of it kind of fell into place because after I had gained that trust and that respect and that rapport with my clients, or I'm sorry, while I was, mm -hmm. while that was all happening, if I was having a situation where I was having a difficult time learning a program or didn't know exactly what the protocol was, I felt comfortable being honest to them. Hey. Joe Schmo, <laughs> I don't know, I just made that up. Um, listen, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, cause they know I just started. I'm gonna be honest with you. I am trying to figure this out. I'm doing the best that I can. I will do as quickly as possible. Um, I just need a minute, you know, and once I'm up and running, I promise this won't be an issue anywhere. And they're, oh, don't worry about mm -hmm. it, you're new. Like, but you have to gain that yeah, that, that, that type of uh, trust in the relationship right. and understanding right. amongst each other for you to be able to, for, for them to feel that they can, or for them to truly be that honest with you about right. whatever it is mm -hmm. and build that relationship and for you to be able to share that. I think that's really important. You know, I think um, I learned a really important lesson when I was working in the car business. One of my first jobs in the car business was as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. And the guy who trained me, um, one of the things he's taught me, he said, Chris, you don't, Number one, you don't know that much yet. And number two, you don't have to know that much because within the environment of this business, which at the time was a Ford dealership, mm -hmm. we have the answer, right? right? So when you're with your customer, guest, client, whatever you wanna call it, and they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, the right answer is, you know, I don't know the answer to that question, but if you give me just a moment, I will go check with my manager and I'll, I'll get that for you, yep. right? And I think everybody appreciates that, People right? dig that shit. Yeah. They just want your honesty, not, oh, well, let me make yeah, up an answer Yeah, pull some bullshit pull out, out of, oh, well, yeah. you know, uh, you well, know. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, people really dig that. They like sincere, honest people around them. Yes. Whether it be work, whether it be friends or whatever the, whatever the case may be. That's always been our philosophy here. And I, I mean, listen, I, you know, I, I can tell you wholeheartedly, I have succeeded at that. And at times I've failed at that, right? In terms yeah. of, of just being consistent always in, in managing and nurturing the relationships. I can say that we've always been consistent in being honest and mm -hmm. thorough uh, mm -hmm. and transparent in what we're communicating about. That's the nature of, of the foundation of our business. You know, but we all we all succeed and we all fail at that at some point in time too. Of course, but it's inevitable. I, I think no one's perfect, right? But I think one of the, I think one of the things that our clients appreciate about us is that we are honest with them and 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 um, we're honest about the things that we bring that work and we're honest about the times that we try something and it didn't work and and okay, let's go back to the drawing board and try to try to do better, right? And I think anybody would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, so working, you come to us, so far. <laughs> great. Well, you know, and I'm really, I, I'm really glad to hear what you're saying because you'll continue to learn and grow and develop in our business, learning more about what our business means. And I know you've learned a lot over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. You'll continue to learn more, right. but that foundational relationship piece is just so it's so important. So it really is. And if you don't if you don't have it, I mean, womp, womp. 
<laughs> right. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, put yourself in the other in the other person's shoes. I mean, you don't just want some robot like, well, here is your advertising graphics. No. <laughs> like, hey, dude, what's up? How's your day? Exactly. Oh, you had a bad day? Oh, let me. All right. Tell me about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that does suck. You're right. I'm curious um, to shift gears here. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you come to us with a very unique skill set. Right, you come to us having worked for Channel Seven here in South Florida, yes. in a number of different capacities, on camera and off camera. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. And uh, you know, for those of you watching or listening, you know, that are in South Florida, certainly everybody knows that Channel Seven is like the powerhouse, you know, news the network. The number one here. local news station. Exactly, actually. and you know, really <laughs> high quality production studio. Like yeah. everything is like Channel Seven stuff has a look and a feel to it that certainly differentiates itself from the others. Yes, it's very so true. So I'm curious to get a little insight from you. What was it like to work there? What was, you know, what were some of your responsibilities and what was it like to work, you know, at a, a, a live TV news station that's cranking out that much good content? I mean, listen, overall, it was amazing. I was there for eight, nine years. Okay. Shy a few months that I actually moved back to New York, because I was like, I wanna move back to New York, but I came back and I had the kind of relationship with my boss that she was like, if you're back, do you wanna come back? And I'm like, yes, please, I made a mistake. But um, Channel 7's awesome, you know? Um, not everything's a walk in the park, like there were you know, good days and bad days, mm-hmm. good things and bad things. Um, I always enjoyed obviously doing the on-air stuff. I mean, that's just right. what made made me tick, you know? Um, but I was also in sales, and I was also, I helped out, you know, in as many ways as I could in other departments. Um, so let's talk about, let's yeah. break that down into a few pieces. Let's sure. talk about the on-air part. Like, okay, wh- okay what, what, what were some of your consistent on-air opportunities that you got to do? Well, uh, they, Channel 7 had they offered me as like a spokesperson when they when they brought on either new business or a new client, mm-hmm. um, and that you know that maybe had a smaller budget. And a lot of times, these mom and pop places, they don't they don't have the kind of budget to create a commercial. Right. You know, I mean, it could most of the time it, it's over ten thousand dollars if you were to go to a studio or something and get something professionally done. So to alleviate that. Um, Cause obviously they still have to pay for advertising, but to alleviate the cost of production, we do it in house mm-hmm. and they mix, you know, they, they make that part of the agreement that, all right, we have a spokesperson or a host, um, whichever they decide. So either I'm the spokesperson like, oh, hey, come down to Brandsmart or, right. or um, if they, if someone from the company wants to be in the commercial themselves, I'll be the one interviewing them. Like, oh, like tell me about the the sales you have going on at Brandsmart this weekend. Right. Um, so, and I was doing that a lot, like a few times a week, and it was neat because, you know, I I was at my desk at my sales job, and I would just dee, 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 you know walk down the hall mm-hmm. and do my interview, do my segment, and dee, 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 and walk back and and. Back to your it sales was like job. The best of both worlds, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. A nice balance between being able to grow and develop as a as a business person, right? right. You know, in, mm-hmm. in, in the sales side of the business, and then also still be able to, um, you know, nurture or, or uh, substantiate. That's not the word I'm looking for, but to be able to have that creative outlet as well, where you right. could perform to nurture my well being. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it's it's important to do things that make you happy. Yes. It really is. And I don't know. It would just, it, it just made everything worth it. I, I just really. You love to perform. I mean, you're, I you are, you are a performer. <laughs> so that's, that's a natural part of your, um, of your DNA. And, and we'll get to there in a second. But before we do that, I'm just curious when you're, when you're, you know, when you're inside, you know, a, a big news organization like that, you mm-hmm. know, what's the vibe like? I mean, is it is it very calm and everybody's kind of running on schedule and is easy breezy or is there like this high cranking energy where like everything's on a deadline and, and, and happening at last second? You know, it depends on the day. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, if there's breaking news, it's, you know, doo, 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 like things going on everywhere. People, right. you know, oh my God, we have a deadline and oh my God, you know, there's a there's a chase on I-95 and we need <laughs> the helicopters and, and then everyone's crowding around the TVs and wow, oh my gosh. Um, 
you know, obviously that's not every day, but, um, you know, it depends. It really depends. A lot of times it is um, high energy. Mm -hmm. It is high energy, Um, but for good reasons too, you know? Um, We have, you know, celebrities come in. Oh my God, did you hear that so-and-so is coming? What? You know? (laughs) Right. Um, Name one. Like, do you have a couple examples of people that came in where it was like, oh my God, this person's going to be here? (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, I forgot his name though. There were some um, basketball players. Okay. And I don't know them. Like heat players or? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. But I will say this. I One of my highlights um, was it wasn't at the station, but um, I did commercial shoots sometimes, you know, um, With outside yeah. outside of the station. Mm-hmm. Um, those are my favorite. But I, I got to interview um, Shaquille O'Neal and Magic Johnson. Wow. So those were, those were two of my highlights. Highlights. What was that like? Oh my gosh, unreal. Were you nervous or did, or was, I mean, I would imagine, of course, you're nervous going right. into that, but like once you get into the conversation, what's it like? Oh my gosh, like? totally, they're totally, they're us, they're normal people, they're, right. you know? But yes, you know, going up to it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I hope like I don't have food in my teeth and I hope I don't <laughs> say something wrong. Um, but no, they're, they're just so cool and they're also, um, I think they understand that people interviewing them might be nervous. So I think just their realness comes through a lot, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Well, I would imagine that you know they, they understand that it's right. it's a it can be a nervous situation for the person interviewing them. And uh, if what you're telling me is what I'm hearing, it, it, it they they probably go out of their way right. to create an environment to, where that's where right. there's not that awkwardness or to uncomfortable be over easy. the top oh my right. gosh hi how yeah. what's your name like so over the top nice it's that's really cool yeah that had yeah. to be a real those are highlight moments right yeah yeah so so let's touch on the performance thing okay mm-hmm. because um from my understanding well not from my understanding i know you're a singer um you say you're not a dancer but i think you're probably a little bit of a dancer as well too. i'm literally the worst dancer <laughs> on the face of the earth i two step uh, uh, like literally side to side yeah that that's kind of me too in in most like normal you know dancing scenarios right. however my wife and i are, she's she's finally after all these years been like you know she really loves to dance, and we've taken lessons together. And Get I will out. tell you, now it's been a little bit. We, we've taken a little hiatus through the through the holidays, but I was dreading it, dreading it, dreading it. But by the fourth or fifth lesson, when I started feeling like I had an understanding of what I was doing, and right. I started to feel a little bit more confidence leading her through, right. it was like, boom, the switch flipped, and I really legitimately liked it, and I was so surprised by that. What kind of dancing? Uh, we were doing uh, well. Let's see. We flamenco, the, the, the hustle. Like the, the, the first thing they teach is like the cha cha. No, the hustle, and then they taught us um, merengue, uh, a little bit of bachata, and nice. then we started working into salsa. And then we then we we the holidays came and we stopped. So right, we're right. gonna get back to it. But it's you I should. was really surprised at how much fun it was, and I was dreading it. I'm sure it's a lot of fun, but. Here's my st- here's my situation. Mm-hmm. I don't have rhythm, and that's not something you can teach someone. Right. And it's very strange because when I sing, I have rhythm. Right. When I try to dance, it's like a hot mess. Right. And I just can't get my act together. Is it? I think we joked about this at one point in time. I'm dating myself by using this as a reference, but is it like Elaine from Seinfeld? Yes, <laughs> maybe worse. Right? Maybe worse. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Are oh you a clum- are you clumsy? Like, are you the oh kind of person gosh, who trips over yes. and falls and bumps your head on things? Yes, <laughs> all the time. My mom jokingly calls me Grace. <laughs> yeah, as in lack of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh gosh, do I have stories about? Oh my god, my god, I've gotten. That's Moving funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go there right now. You did say sometimes you overshare. We could, we could, we could drill on that vein in a second. All right, so let's. Let, but we'll move away from that, so yes. you don't have to tell any embarrassing stories. But wait, you have to tell everyone. Does everyone at home know that you are very musically inclined as well? I don't know that every. No, I would imagine that most people really don't know that. You know, I mean, my my family and close right. friends know that, but I don't know I that like the that's, world was knows a, that. We connected right away over music. Yes. That was one of the first things. Mm-hmm. And you play how many different instruments? A lot. I mean, I play guitar. 
I play bass. I can tinker around on on the piano and drums. And now I'm starting to uh, teach myself how to DJ a little bit. Yeah. And um, uh, we've built an audio production suite here so we can tinker around and make some music and have fun. And you sing. You know, I, I, I feel that I'm not. I'm not a confident singer, you know, All quietly, right, but enough. when it's time to like really do it in front of people, I get very nervous and very uncomfortable. Well, you do have a very nice voice. Well, thank you very much. Let's transition back to your voice and singing, <laughs> okay? <laughs> let's, let's move away from my, uh, my uh, singing and move to yours, okay? Mm -hmm. When, as a child, do you discover singing and music and, and what does it mean to you when you figure that out? Um, for me personally? Yes. I was singing before I could speak. Um, yeah, my mom, uh, my mom knew, and my dad, they, they knew that, or they had a feeling I was gonna be into music or singing, because mm -hmm. I would hum songs that were on the radio, but I mean, this is again, before I could speak. So mm -hmm. I would just, or like even Sesame Street, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, I also was obsessed with Gloria Estefan, and actually have been my whole life. <laughs> really? Yeah, so I used to play, uh, you know, obviously then this is when I became a little bit older, I would play her cassette tapes for um, uh, the Miami Sound Machine right. until the string came out. Like I right. would just rewind, play, rewind, play. Um, and I would always sing, but I, I was nervous to sing in front of everyone. But I would sing in my room with the door shut, mm -hmm. like loud and confidently thinking, all right, like no one can hear me. But obviously, you know, my parents are like, okay, like she, she can sing. Right. Um, but I was just always too scared to sing in front of, of anyone. Did they, <laughs> did they, it sounds like they recognize that you have this talent. Did they encourage it? Did they oh, want yeah. you to get lessons or, you know, like move yeah. into that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, my mom would always be like, just, just sing in front of people. Just sing. I'm like, no, I'm scared. She's like, just do it, just do it, you know? What is the fear? Um, like, what are you afraid of? You know? know, like when you say, I know I'm scared. Cause I, I mean, I, I feel that way sometimes with certain things as well too. So what is it, right? Like, what are we afraid of? Um, rejection. Rejection, I was, right. that's what I was gonna say. I was right. actually gonna say fucking up. <laughs> right, okay, that's okay. Um, you know, what if I sing in front of people and I'm not good, like at all, like right. at all, to the point where, you know, glass is breaking. But has that ever happened? No, and let me tell you this, ever since I had that one opportunity to sing, where my, it was my chorus teacher in elementary school, she said, just do it. And she put me on the spot and I was like, mm, fine, fine. And it was a Disney song. And uh -huh. dude, I have not shut my mouth since. <laughs> now I feel, I feel more comfortable singing um, then I am even having a one-on-one a -on -one conversation with someone, mm -hmm. for real. I mean, something comes over me and I, I mean, I've, I, I, I've been lucky enough to sing in, in a few stadiums. Really? Yeah. Which ones? Um, um, oh my gosh. The one here. Um, okay. Don't mind oh my Dolphin gosh. State, right? Yes. It, it has 18,000 names over the last yes, 20 years. Yes, and so. um, the Marlins. Okay. Um, like National I, Anthem or? Yes. Really? And I sang on 9-11 uh, actually, which was, oh my gosh, a huge honor. Emotionally charged, I would imagine. It was. And you're singing the National Anthem? The National Anthem and God Bless America. In front of how many people? <sighs> they, you know, thousands, however many, yeah. Yeah, yeah like mm -hmm. thousands. Yeah. What is that? Okay, so that's a big audience, right? Oh my gosh, it's what does amazing. That feel like? I, I, it's 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 euphoric. I, I it's like <laughs> it's like an out of body experience. I don't know. Um, yes, I'm nervous before, like when I'm getting ready, doing right. my hair and makeup. I'm like, oh my god, what if I screw up? The minute I open my mouth, I'm just a hundred percent in. And You're if in I the moment. and if I screw up, which happens, sure, um, or I don't hit the right notes, you know, whatever, just keep going. Right. And um, I don't know. It's just. I can't even explain it. It's. I, I, I can understand and relate to some degree. Yeah. Only n not. I mean, I've never performed any in any in front of any type of significantly large audience ever. But as a musician and a guitar player, one of my dreams was always to play in a band and and perform 
you know, that was the whole thing is like, you know, it was for me, it was less about like making recordings. It was more like, can we get on stage somewhere right. and play in front of people and, right. and you know, have the energy take you oh, over yeah. and get into that moment. And it's really, it's, it is a hard thing to describe what that feels like, right? Mm -hmm. It just, you just, it's like everything goes away mm -hmm. and you are 100% in the moment of right. channeling whatever is coming through you and going out of you. Right. And especially with the national anthem, like I have a tendency of while I'm singing, like scanning the audience because people are so just proud, you know, mm -hmm. of 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 this of the national anthem of of, of living here, and um, I don't know, it just it's such an awesome feeling. It, it, you know, people taking their hats off yes. and and doing this, and and everyone's silent. It's just. It's well, amazing. you're singing, quite frankly, the most important song of our right. nation, right? The one that, the honor. one song that, as Americans, you know, binds us together, mm -hmm. should and hopefully does for everybody. Right. You know, the the foundational theme of what our country is about and what it means to share that together. So, Absolutely. to be able to sing that in front of thousands of people and share that moment must be just incredible. It, it is, and funny thing um, about singing in a stadium. It's not easy because um, the feedback. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! It that sounds was, not great. You hear yourself, right? right? Like like we hear ourselves in here. Sure. Um, but then you also hear yourself um, a few seconds later, echoing so, off everything. Uh huh. So I'll be singing a sentence, and meanwhile, I'm hearing myself on the speakers sing the sentence before. Mm -hmm. So that can be a little. Um, tricky, yeah. But um, I've learned to kind of just like zone that out and just focus on not listening. Yeah, just you got to get in the moment and just stay right. focused on what right. you're doing. I, I, so cool! Congratulations is, for being you. able to have those experiences. That's, I mean, really, because thank think you. about it. Think about how many you know young kids, boys and girls, you know, want to perform and want to get in front of a big audience, and to really reach that level in any capacity. Is is it's a significant achievement, and it is a it is a dream come true, is it not? It is. It really is. And you know, I don't do it on the reg. I don't do it on the reg. On the reg. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wish I did. Right. Um, but even just having the opportunity, I mean, even singing at at a um, at a high school or or a middle school football game or mm -hmm. something like that, just to have that experience, I, I just for anyone that is loves to sing and, and wants to give it a try. I mean, go to your, I mean, obviously not now because of COVID, but I was gonna say like, go to your um, your music teacher or go to the football coach or something. Hey, is, is anyone singing the national anthem this mm -hmm. weekend? And a lot of times they'll be like, well, no, it's just a scrimmage or something like that. Okay, can I sing? And Did you gonna, do that? Would you go I, and ask for it? Yes. Just straight up ask? And yes. Isn't it amazing how much you can actually do if you just ask? Right. Everybody's so damn know. afraid to ask, you know, can I do this? I'd love to do that. And and most times people, are, they want to help you, and, and, right? Right. But here's the thing. I won't ask if, if it's not something I'm passionate about. Right. I get nervous mm -hmm. because I'm like, all right, well, I, I can't explain it. But like when it comes to something I'm passionate about, yeah, like, psh, I'm going to ask. Right. What, what are you going to do? Say no? Okay. I'll get over it. <laughs> I'll go ask someone else. <laughs> so uh, another thing that um, that I've learned about you that probably, well, most people that are going to be watching or listening to this don't know yet is that you were on American Idol, right? Yeah. Tell, tell me about that experience. You know, I know you made it in a decent way, right? So mm -hmm. like, like, give me a little bit of what that was about and how that felt. Okay, so I tried out twice. Right. Um, the first time I made it to the top 100 in New York. Okay. And it was, um, this is why I was getting confused before when we were talking about stadiums. For some reason I had Shea Stadium in my head. But Shea Stadium was where we all um, met audition, right? and okay. auditioned, right? So it was interesting because the first time I auditioned was earlier, like a couple seasons after Kelly Clarkson, where they still allowed you to sl like sleep outside and camp okay. outside. And- um, Did you do that? I did. and. Thank to, thanks to my mom, she came with me and, but I'm so glad they don't do it like that anymore because it almost became like, listen, it's it was fun for what it was, but it could be dangerous. I mean, it was cold out. Um, I don't think it was winter, I don't remember, but right. it, it wasn't Not comfortable, comfortable certainly. Right, right, right. And to, to, people slept on the sidewalk. And the other thing was too, like people could get there as soon as they want. People would be there a week early. So now it's like, if I want, 
to have a chance to audition, that means I have to be there a week early. And who the hell wants to do that or even can do that? Right, like sit outside for a week. Yeah. People literally did that that long? Yes, at that time th they were allowed to. Right. So anyway, that was the first time I tried out. And anyway, I yeah, I made it to top 100. There was, I think, 16,000 people that tried out. Oh it my was, gosh. The full stadium was jam packed. And it was awesome. It was a very, it was a cool, it was, it was a, it was mentally and physically draining experience because mm -hmm. also, um, you know, it was kind of like a cattle call thing. So you wait, you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait days, days, days. You finally get in there. And when I tell you, like they, they call people down and then you don't meet with the judges at first because um, that's always everyone's first question. Right. Um, Did you meet Simon? You know, right. right. Um, it's, you know, all the producers and whatnot and they have little tables set up and you just sing for a few seconds and they'll either let you sing for, I, I don't remember the max amount of time, but it couldn't be more than 20 seconds. Really? Mm-hmm. And so sometimes just, they'll cut just you off. Yep. Yes, no, sing again. Uh, no, still. So this is before what people see on TV, right? Oh, yeah. So there's like this weeding out process that right. goes before you, they show the people that get to do their audition in front right. of the panel, right? Right. So, so you, when you say you made it into the top 100, does that mean that you were you made it through and you actually sang for the judges? Well, no. Isn't that nuts? This is what people at home don't realize, and this is what I didn't realize either. Going into it, I made it to the top 100, but I didn't. The next stage, the next step, mm -hmm. had I make it, had I made it past that point, would be to meet with the judges. I made it to the step right before that, but uh. people think, you know, because they, you know, they listen. It's a TV show, sure. okay? So they, they, they do um, highlight an interview. Um, and give people screen time that, you know, do silly things and, you know, or wackadoodles and, you know, oh, you know like the, whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, because people think that's funny and people, and look, it, it's Well, worked. it is funny. <laughs> it's, it is, it's hysterical. But, um, and then there's also the people that have, you know, whether they have great voices or whatnot, um, they have a story. I slept in my car mm -hmm. and this, that, and the other thing. And these are all factors in the beginning um, that they take into account um, to make the show interesting and right. have, you know it would it would be kind of boring if right. if all they showed were the best singers right you know getting into these final rounds and it's one great singer after right. another great singer after another great singer right right and um, you know over time when you're watching the season um, then you do start feeling like you know these people mm -hmm. and you're like oh my god you know as they're they're getting better and better so now you're like emotionally invested and. Oh my gosh! Like this person deserves to win, and oh, they had a great live performance. And, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> I forgot the. I'm going off on a tangent. I'm it's sorry. Okay. You asked well, what you it was like. Well, was, you were talking about just you know the general nature of how they they weed through a lot, right. but they also let through a number of performers that may maybe aren't as good or have interesting yeah. personal interest stories to make the show exciting, right? That's what I was going to say. There you Thank, are. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank um, you. Um, Back when, on track. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying this isn't why I didn't make it to the next step, because it's probably not. But I did notice that when I went and I sang, um, when I was in the top 100, uh, they asked me, all right, like, what's your story? And my freaking dumbass was like, well, my name's Rachel. I'm 22. I live in Westchester County. Uh, I live with my family. I'm really happy. I love to sing. No. <laughs> Did if, you say it just? <laughs> well, probably. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> you but, were just a kid, like I know, happy, but thinking right? Back, like, gosh, I wish I would have been like, oh yeah, I live in a sewer. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no, you I, don't I, wish you said that. Well, well if it really? maybe it w I don't know. Right? I don't know. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Yeah, but we talked about being open and honest and transparent, and that wouldn't have led you in the right direction. You know that. Like to be like, oh yeah, I, I just rolled out of the dumpster this morning, and. Well, you know, there you are, like, ah. It might have taken me to the next step, right? Though. Yeah. But no. It's funny. So, yeah. you were, so you were excited, you were happy, and in the moment you gave an honest answer that maybe wasn't quite what they were looking for right. in terms of a story, right. right? But also, I might have not, my voice might have not been up to par, you know? I'm not saying that's the only reason. Right. I am, it is one of the things I'm suspicious about. Yeah. To this what, day. that your voice wasn't up to par or your no, story wasn't up to that par? that my story wasn't up to par. Well, you know. You never know. 
who knows? Now it's led you here to this moment, right? Yes. And now it's about what we and well, what you make from this moment moving forward, right? Yeah. And the second time, I eh, didn't even make it. They were like, uh, no. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> oh my God, I'm never going to sing again. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really do that? Uh huh. You go home to your room and cry for a little bit? I cried the whole way home from Jersey. I was like, Mom, I'm never doing this again. I'm never singing ever. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. I was just having a mental breakdown. Well, it happens. Yeah. So you grew up in New York. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. All right. So we've, you know, through a lot of these conversations, we've got Tom, who grew up in New Jersey, who worked in New York, Susie, who grew up in New York, mm-hmm. in Washington Heights. We talked about that the other day. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I we've don't know always if had I knew that. A, yeah, we've always uh, what you part? know uh, I'm from a town called Sparta, which is northwestern New Jersey, kind of out in the country in the woods. Okay. Yeah. So we've got we've Badass. always we've always thank you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So let's talk about New York a little bit, sure. okay? Cuz it's it's a common thread now working through a lot of these conversations. Mm-hmm. Where in New York do you grow up? Long Island? Um Westchester County. Westchester County. Okay, mm-hmm. excuse me. Yeah. Now, I almost like that's like an insult, Long Island. No, Westchester <laughs> County. <laughs> <laughs> no, but people. No, but I worked in Long Island. Right. So, and people in Long Island would always, oh, you live upstate, and I'm like, no, I don't. Upstate is like Albany. Right. But yeah. So, so Westchester County. <laughs> yes. You grew up there. Mm-hmm. What's that like? Um, hmm. it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ringing endorsement. No, I mean, listen, it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. It was. It was nice. Um, Westchester County is um it's very expensive to live there right and um you know i i almost don't like saying that's where i'm from because the first thing that people always say is oh so you were rich and and it and it makes me mad Mm -hmm. because why does that make you mad because everyone else was so they're not wrong in thinking that right but it was quite the opposite for my family and we just got lucky and were able to live there because my grandfather built our house Mm -hmm. you know when my mom was a baby okay so we just our family just stayed in that stayed in that house right um but that is always always a common thing that that people and listen they're not wrong because yeah western yeah westchester county for those that don't know is definitely a more affluent area Uh, of what you would call the New York metropolitan area it's really north it's north of the city so you're not in the city but it's like right it's where a lot of the wealthy people who work in the city live correct it's very beautiful correct. a lot of beautiful homes etc cetera, etc cetera, mm-hmm. right interesting so you grow up in that environment where everything around you is like you know amazing people think that that's what you are and you're not right 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 how'd that feel um listen growing up i'm sure I, you know there were times where i wished that i could do the same kind of activities and mm-hmm. things. Like, for example, we didn't go to summer camp because it was expensive. Right. But everyone else went to summer camp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, so little things like that where I'd be like, oh man, I wish I could have done this, that, or the other thing. But, you know, I had a really great childhood. So right. who the hell am I to complain about anything? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you grew up in a magical place and it sounds like, you know, to have the family living multi-generational in the yeah. same home. That's a, I, that sounds like a cool experience to me that you don't, you don't hear of that much anymore. Yeah. Right. Cause everybody moves here, moves there, moves right. out, moves out. You don't like the family home yeah. is not something that necessarily gets continued to pass on generation right. after generation. And not only that, my poppy Joe would always, you know, tell us stories like, Oh, what if there's, we used to be a, a lot of of dirt and i just got some bricks <laughs> some of my friends together and we started building a house and he'll he'll he would you know god rest us all he would just it was just so cute right he was you know he would tell the story to anyone and everyone that could listen and it was um it made me proud you know yeah absolutely it was, it was a nice sturdy house <laughs> right that that your family members built and you live there mm-hmm. like that that's a yeah. very found that to me that's a grounding and beautiful found foundational yes. thing for your family yeah so you're growing up in, in in Westchester when do you start adventuring into the city um legally like I mean <laughs> no, like just, yeah, no but, I mean no I mean like um <laughs> like I would go to like bars and stuff with like a little fake ID right like everybody right, right. um 
but you know i probably in college mm-hmm. was when i started going into the city more i mean listen i always went from time to time but um you know it's almost like uh You know, for example, Disney. Like when you say you live in Florida, people are like, "Oh, you must go to Disney every weekend." And it's like, "No, I don't." You go. You you must be at the beach all the time. Right. 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 Like, no, dude. Yeah. I have weekend errands to run. (laughs) There's things to do. Right. Right. So So, the same for you. Yeah, but I would go into any time I went into the city was. Oh, I love the city. It's just Mm -hmm. so magical, and every single time you go, um, it's just an experience. And each time is a very different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just, if if you haven't been to the city, if someone hasn't been to the city, I suggest if you ever have a chance to go, because it is wild. It is wild. Yeah. Even just walking around and people watching, you know? The energy is incredible. Oh my gosh. And I love the way that we all call it the city. Right. I know. Like you, when you live in the proximity of New York City, you don't ever say, I'm going to New York City. Right. right? Yeah. Like here you'd say, I'm going to Miami. Right. right. Like here right. you wouldn't say, I'm going to the city. Right. I don't know that people would necessarily know that. But in right. that, in the tri state area, you're going to the city. Right. The, it's the, the city. Everybody mm-hmm. knows what that is. Mm-hmm. It's not New York City. Right. So cool. Love the city. I know. I, um, I actually wanted to go back there recently and just couldn't. I think we even chatted yes, about this we did. briefly because I like to go there, you know, every couple of years and just get in and get out and walk around and see just the hugeness of it all. It just, it's, it's I find it very inspiring. It really is. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, It's I just agree. so amazing. No matter what time of year you go to, I mean, there's some, there's not, not something going on. There's a shit ton of things going on. Um, and there's just so many people. And like you, you said too, like the energy is just, it's unlike anywhere else I've ever been or anything that I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's a cool place. So um, a a final question, Mm -hmm. right? Now at this stage in your life, you've had these these experiences, you know, from uh, your love of music and singing and to performing and to working, you know, at a news station. And and how do you, at this stage, you like kind of pull all that together in a way that gives you um, continued dreams and goals moving forward like what you know what still drives you in a direction you know i still it's listen i still it's i'm trying to figure it out every day you know right um do you want to always do you hope to always continue to perform oh my god yes right would that be like the the even if it's in front of stuffed animals like in my living room (laughs) Like, yes, I will always perform. Always, always, always. Um, you know, it's like I said, what makes me tick. It's what I'm passionate about. It's um, just sparks this joy that nothing else really does. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it makes me who, who I am. <laughs> That's great. Well, yes. I would say that um, it would be my wish for you then that you always be able to incorporate that into your life, that you always be able to perform and sing and express yourself in that way because it's clear that that's something that you know the number one thing that that makes you happy it's cathartic it's it's free therapy yeah is what i always say for me at least but and everyone has something Mm -hmm. that makes you feel that way and if you don't have something find it because i guarantee something exists and it may not be something that you even are you know realize until you do it and you're like, wow, like this is free therapy. It's, I can cancel my therapist this week. <laughs> I think that we figure it out in childhood and then a lot of people forget it as adults. Right. The things that they that we all enjoyed, you know, doing as kids, playing, whatever whatever we did as kids where you played. Right. And whatever play you gravitated, like you played and singing was play, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. For me, ultimately, like playing guitar was play, right? right? And, and I know you you were talking to Richie about this in in his podcast too. Mm-hmm. With the kid, yeah, right. With with how kids really enjoy, and they they don't think about playing in terms mm-hmm. of like trying to improve or something. They're just doing it out of the sheer joy of it, right? And I think that that um, as adults, we lose that a lot. One hundred percent. And so that's why. If you look around here, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, not everybody's going to see. We're having a, you know, a, an agency kickoff meeting 
Oh. <laughs> oh Somebody's God. drilling upstairs. That's funny. Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I want to take a broom and be like, ding, ding. hey, shut up, up, yeah, up there. That's so shut great, up. Right? <laughs> but if you look around here, I mean, we've got a stage set up, we've got speakers, we've got the whole thing. Right. And it's so that we, and we incorporate some play into what we do around here. Yes, which is so important. Yes. It really is. Rachel, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks, Chris. It's been well, wonderful being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We're going to... Pu- this This is a... These- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm at the freaking dentist. I love it, right? Oh, God, if that was how rough the dentist would be. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. The imperfections are what are going to make this enjoyable. Oh, and hell so, yeah. yeah. This is my favorite part yeah. of the podcast. Awesome. Well, <laughs> we're going to pause for now, okay? Because yes. we'll do this again and we'll pick up on new threads. But Absolutely. in the meantime, I thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, did you a for great having job. me. It was a pleasure to speak to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Cheers, Rachel. Cheers. Thanks. Clink, clink, clink. clink. <laughs> Drink my coffee. <laughs> the coffee. My coffee.